Hi friends, you are back with me, Professor Girish Kukreja. Today, what we will be talking about is your triacylglycerol. What happens to the fatty acids? Uh, from where did they come? Yes, <laughs> either you ingested them or you synthesize them. So, whether you have synthesized or whether you ingested, these particular fatty acids now have two routes uh, to go out. Now, one of them is uh, their incorporation in your membrane lipids, which we refer to as your phospholipids. And the other one is to get incorporated into the formation of this triacylglycerol. Uh, where to go? This is decided by this particular fatty acids depending on the metabolic needs of the cell at that particular time. Uh, say for example, the cell is actively dividing and multiplying. In this particular case, the cell will require new membrane lipids and therefore most of these particular fatty acids would be directed towards the synthesis of these particular membrane lipids like your sphingolipids or your phospholipids. But when the cell is resting and still having a, what you call as good intake of these particular fatty acids, in that particular case, it will go for synthesis of these triacylglycerol. Now, these triacylglycerols, uh, one of the most, uh, what you call as common storage nutrient, you can say, which gives us energy of more than 38 kilojoule per gram one of the highest uh, what you call as storehouse of energy which you can talk about uh, whenever you're talking about storage of energy the two things which click our mind one is the glycogen and other is these particular tyacyl glycerol uh, you'll find we store hardly a few hundred grams of glycogen uh, which can hardly what you call as uh, provide our uh, needs for a few hours say around for 12 to 13 hours as such but uh, for a person who is of an average weight uh, having around a 70 kilogram weight will have around 1515 kilograms of this particular triacylglycerol which can help that particular individual to survive for more than 10-12 weeks. Uh, anyways, we are not going to fast for so long anyways. <laughs> so what I wanted to emphasize here is that triacylglycerol the esters of these particular fatty acids, three fatty acids esterified to a glycerol are the major storage uh, form of what you call as nutrients. Now, how are these synthesized? Now, talking about triacylglycerol or talking about your phospholipids, you will find that uh, the synthetic pathways for both these, they have many intermediates in common. What you basically require for synthesizing a triacylglycerol or your phospholipids is your glycerol 3-phosphate number one as a backbone so we know that this triacylglycerol has this glycerol backbone so you require this backbone so this backbone is your glycerol 3-phosphate so you are going to require that number one and second what you are going to require is your fatty acids the activated what you call as fatty acids in the form of fatty acyl coas so uh, talking about this backbone so from where do you get this particular backbone in most of the cases you will find that this particular l glycerol 3 phosphate is derived from dhap the intermediate which is formed during the glycolysis so when your glucose is undergoing glycolysis there is formation of this particular dihydroxyacetone phosphate and this via and NAD linked what you call as dehydrogenase that is your glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase it is reduced to form what is called as your L-glycerol 3-phosphate so the major uh, what you call as uh, L-glycerol 3-phosphate uh, is formed by uh, reduction of this dihydroxyacetone phosphate by glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. In liver and kidney, some amount of your glycerol 3-phosphate may be formed by the action of glycerol kinase. So, where your glycerol kinase phosphorylates this glycerol to form L-glycerol 3-phosphate. So, you have this backbone ready. So, we have this particular glycerol 3-phosphate now ready as a backbone. Now what we want is uh, the three fatty acids to form a triacylglycerol. Uh, we'll go step by step. So one of your fatty acid it is what you call as activated. Um, it is what you call as activated by acyl coa synthetase and that particular acyl coa this is the same acyl coa synthetase in the earlier video you must have uh, learnt about beta oxidation where we what you call as activate this fatty acid by converting into fatty acyl coa so this is the same enzyme uh, doing the same thing <laughs> so this acyl coa synthetase via the hydrolysis of ATP using that energy attaches this coash group to this fatty acid and it forms what is called as your fatty acyl coa so like this we will keep two fatty acyl coas ready 
so one fatty acyl co is esterified to the first what you call as carbon second fatty acyl co is esterified to the second carbon the coash groups are removed and what you have is the formation of diacyl glycerol 3 phosphate or you popularly call it as phosphatidic acid so phosphatidic acid or a phosphatidate now this is what is a common intermediate in the formation of your triacyl glycerol or your phospholipid so the pathway is actually going to diverge from here so whether you are synthesizing a phospholipid or whether you are glycerophospholipid obviously i mean where uh, glycerol 3 phosphate is the backbone so whether you are synthesizing a glycerophospholipid or you are synthesizing a triacyl glycerol uh, you are going to come here that is the synthesis of this phosphatidic acid now let us assume that the cell is relaxing and it is going to store this particular uh, what you call as fatty acids so it will remove this particular phosphate group so the next step would be catalyzed by phosphatidic acid phosphatase phosphatidic acid phosphatase would remove this phosphate group and this will result in the formation of 1,2 diacyl glycerol and this third what you call as carbon which is there it will be again what you call as esterified with the third fatty acyl CoA in the similar way so our fatty acyl fatty acid will be acted upon by acyl CoA synthetase to form fatty acyl CoA fatty acyl CoA via this acyl transferase here also I forgot to mention I suppose that this acyl transferases are the enzyme which are going to catalyze this esterification of this particular fatty acyl CoA to these particular carbons. So here also your acyl transfer will transfer the third fatty acid to the third carbon atom and therefore you have the formation of this triacyl glycerol. So thus you have formed this particular triacyl glycerol. So let's summarize for synthesis of triacyl glycerol you need a backbone backbone you will get from uh, what you call as your DHAP or glycerol so you form L glycerol 3 phosphate L glycerol 3 phosphate you have two fatty acyl coas which are formed by acyl coa synthetases transferred by acyl transferases and you have an intermediate formation of phosphatidic acid phosphatidic acid comprises of a glycerol backbone to what you call as fatty acid esterified and the phosphate group this form a common intermediate in the synthesis of both phospholipid as well as triacyl glycerol for synthesis of triacyl glycerol or triglyceride i remove this phosphate by phosphatidic acid phosphatase form 1 to diacyl glycerol add the third what you call as fatty acyl group and form what is called as triacyl glycerol. Stay tuned with us for more in microbiology, metabolism and biochemistry. Thank you.